Hello, Medfield. Welcome once again to Happenings in Medfield. Uh, today I'm interviewing Mike Sullivan, who I think probably everybody at home knows, a uh, longtime town administrator, and I've asked him to address two different things. One is town meeting and how it affects not only the uh, town hall and the staff there, but how it affects the residents of Medfield. And the secondly, the second one is how does the new selectman fit into the uh, existing body of people at the town hall? Um, I've seen quite a few changes over the years with selectmen, including me at one point. Uh, so I know he's seen more how different it, how each one of us has fit in the schedules. And sure. Well, the town meeting this year uh, was uh, a very lengthy one. It had 50 articles, which is uh, very unusual. And it went, uh, the warrant report was 102 pages which in my time here, we've never had one that thick. In fact, uh, because of the length of it, we had to do it in a, a binding form rather than the traditional booklet that we put out. And actually, a lot of people liked the format because the printing was much bigger and mm -hmm. it was much easier to read. But um, 50 articles, and some of them were quite long, some of the stormwater articles and the uh, water conservation articles were very lengthy. And as you know, there were a bunch of zoning articles. The yep. planning board had nine articles. But um, the moderator did a remarkable job of moving things along. Uh, we were prepared for a second night of town meeting and possibly even a third. Uh, but he managed to g get it all through in one night. And um, th there were, uh, at the last minute, there were several withdrawals of articles. There was a withdrawal of an article on the rail trail. There was a withdrawal of an article on the Dwight Derby House. Uh, then we were able to throw some of the other articles into the consent calendar, That's the okay. street acceptances and things like that. So that did help speed it up. I think the moderator's um, suggestion of grouping the articles by category I worked like that. out well. Especially yeah. the planning board because those articles were so big and so important. Yeah. And I thought it was great that they were all sitting there together, but they had little yes. signs on the back of their chairs. I don't know if you knew that. No, that, that they no, were planning board and they were sitting together and then they got up together in a group. Yeah. I thought it was great. And it, they're right there to address any questions. It, it was good because if one didn't have the answer, there was mm -hmm. the others were right there. It was perfect. I hope they do it again. Down. Yeah. Um, but um, there was a lot, uh, you, you said, how did it affect my job and how did it affect the town? Uh, there was a lot of stuff in there, a lot of meat in the, in the warrant this year that's going to affect it. Um, there was uh, uh, a couple of override questions, uh, a debt exclusion override that was approved for a million dollar bond issue to fund the affordable housing trust. trust. And the affordable housing trust was set up by another article, so those two were taken up together. But uh, the uh, bond issue for a million dollars to fund that affordable housing trust was approved by the voters. Um, there was a, um, a split vote uh, between the selectmen and the warrant committee. The selectmen supported it. The warrant committee was uh, opposed to it. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't opposed to it totally. They felt that it would be better to fund it in the fall right. when the committee had been established and they might have some more information as to how they wanted to proceed and how they wanted to use that million. But it did pass, however, that's subject to a debt exclusion override. Uh, many people think Proposition Two and a Half is voted on at the town meeting, but it's not. It's voted on both ways. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, many people find that, found that out uh, a number of years ago when the school construction bonds mm -hmm. were voted on at town meeting passed by a two-thirds vote at town meeting, but then failed on a majority at, vote at the, at the special election. Uh, and it's the same uh, with any override. There's never an override voted on at a town meeting. The effect of the override can be voted on at a town meeting. For example, uh, the uh, purposes for which the money was appropriated mm -hmm. to go to the Affordable Housing Trust, but the override itself has to go to a special election. Yeah, and um, that special election on the million dollar bond issue will be held June 5th okay. at the senior center, the, the normal place we vote. Yeah, and I think I've told you this before. One of the old time townies told me that the spenders go to town meeting 
and the cheapskates go to the polls. <laughs> and and it, that has happened more and more. I've often seen things pass easily at that town meeting and then come to the polls to know. So well, I'm very curious. Uh, the difference is at town meeting, you have to stand up and be counted and mm -hmm. at the ballot. Uh, you can uh, vote in secret, so I think that probably is part of the difference. It probably is. Um, the other article that was going to be the subject of an override uh, was uh, to appropriate funds uh, to continue providing ALS, ALS service. And a lot of people got confused over what is ALS. Uh, ALS, in this instance, stands for Advanced Life Support. And it's a supplement to the regular basic BLS, basic life support ambulance service that we provide through our fire department. Mm -hmm. um, and we have been providing it as an intercept service where if it was necessary for the advanced level of medical treatment on the, uh, on the way to the hospital, the uh, dispatcher would call it in to ALS and they would intercept or meet our ambulance on right. either at, on, on the way to the hospital or at the site of the pickup. And that worked very well until the uh, uh, provider informed us uh, quite suddenly that they would be no longer be providing the service, only gave us a few days notice. The chief uh, worked diligently, Chief Kingsbury, and was able to find a new ALS intercept provider, but they only lasted a few weeks, and mm -hmm. they said they couldn't make any money on it, so no, they weren't no, going to no, continue. No, not enough calls is what I heard of, yeah. It's a combination of, yeah, not enough calls. And, um, and the, um, uh, it's one of the issues, do we have enough calls to justify the cost? Yep. And, uh, there were, and then there were several issues in terms of what are the options mm -hmm. for uh, continuing to provide intercept service with a private contractor on our own, try to do it on, as a regional uh, multi-town yeah. uh, intercept service, uh, try to have an intercept service perhaps stationed at the town hall or one of the other nearby towns, but with subscribed by several towns on a regional basis, or hire additional yeah. firefighters who are required to be uh, ALS certified. certified yeah. So so those were all discussed and uh, uh, the um, uh, Selectman recommended appropriating $500,000 and the Warrant Committee uh, felt that the results of the study ought to be completed first and uh, they were willing to fund the study, uh, you know, in the order of twenty five, fifty thousand mm dollars -hmm. but not the 500000 until they knew exactly how it was going to be expended and the town meeting went along with the uh, Warrant Committee's okay. recommendation on that. So there will be no override question. For that. For that, um, I wasn't the, sure how to vote on that when I went in because I was an EMT for 18 years and there were several calls where I was absolutely so grateful that you c can't believe how grateful I was that we had that service. At that point it yes, was coming out yeah. from the area hospitals. If we if were he heading into Natick we'd get one from there, heading to, Nor to Needham we'd get one from yeah. the hospital there and it was dynamite to have. So I can understand the need from it in certain, certain insta instances yeah. but it's... The shame is that, uh, as somebody pointed out at town meeting, um, we had very good intercept service provided by the hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, Leonard Morris, Metro West. Uh, Norwood was great. Norwood. And Norwood had a hel helicopter too. Yes, and uh, they gave up the ALS service when the, uh, I know in Norwood's case, when the towns of it, Walpole yeah. and Norwood uh, fire department started their own intercept service mm -hmm. and took away a lot, most of the business, so and they didn't sense. feel yeah. a they couldn't make any money on it, and b um, they didn't have enough calls yeah. to uh, keep their staff properly trained. It's a complicated it. issue. I think we do need to study more. Yes, yeah, and one of the issues, uh, you know, somebody pointed out at one of the meetings is you're required to have 40 hours a year of in-service training to maintain your certification. Uh, the chief estimated we have about 130 to 140 calls a year. Uh, the to qualify as part of your 40 hours training, 
it can't be while you're driving the ambulance. It has to be while you're in, in the back, back yeah. providing service. Do we have enough runs That's to keep true. our staff uh, properly trained? Um, and as someone that came to town, at one of the selectmen's meetings said, um, the advantage of an intercept service is they're doing this all the time. Mm -hmm. And they're up on their skills. They know how to absolutely uh, up to date on the latest techniques. Um, so uh, we'll see how that comes out. But that will uh, not be a question on the ballot because mm -hmm. it was not approved by town meeting. There was potential for third for the operating budgets, but um, thanks to the uh, hard work of the Warrant Committee and all the town departments and department heads and boards, committees, commissions, the selectmen. Yeah. They, they were able to get the budgets cut back, um, and uh, we once again are able to go without an operating override yeah. this one, year. One other re reason that I was reluctant to vote for ALS was because uh, we know that Bill Kingsbury will be retiring from chief. Yes. And I yeah. told him many times, uh, we're all going to miss him. He's a great guy. He really is. He, he's very yeah, honest, yeah. steadfast, yeah. loves this town. Yeah. But somebody else new is going to come in and take his job. And do we want to have a new new chief come in and a whole new service in addition? I think that's asking a lot. Yes, yes. To and me, that was important. You know, whoever comes in is going to take some time to uh, get on their feet and Absolutely. to understand the way Medfield works. We like to think we are unique, and in some <laughs> respects we are, uh, as every town is. So uh, uh, it's... Um, it's not going to be an easy thing for a new chief coming in to deal with that situation. Yeah. Um, that will uh, test test their mettle. So. But I'm sure there'll be some kind of an appreciation th uh, party or whatever for Bill Kingsbury. I hope so. Not, not if Bill has anything I to know. say about it. <laughs> He's not. Um, I've tried to get him on the show. I got the police chief on, but Bill was not comfortable. No, so. he does not like anything. No. Uh, called to his attention. I in fact, I'm sure he was very embarrassed when the town meeting gave him a standing ovation. I bet he was. Well deserved, but it was, uh, I'm sure he, he would have rather crawled under the bleachers. <laughs> but so he's a good man. I think that is really he's important. He's a terrific guy, 45 years. You know, it's interesting listening to the, at the beginning, they, they talk about the people that have passed away this year. And, and when you look at the length of service that uh, Medfield has had, it really is, is unique. Mm -hmm. You tell people that you know we had a uh, a guy that Gary Frazier died this year that worked for 58 years. Bobby Kennedy Sr. retired last year. He had worked for uh, 60 years, yeah. so 62 years, um, or 64 years, depending on who you talk mm -hmm. to. Uh, the uh, George Stephen Anzi worked for 68 <laughs> about 100 years. years I think. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and and even you know. Uh, Chris, my assistant, has been with us 18 years now. Evelyn's Is been with us wow. 28 years. Uh, Ken Feeney was there for, you know, 30 Because he was there back years, Billy McCoy, so yeah. 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 So uh, it, it is remarkable, the length of service. And Bill was with us, I think he was uh, 23 years. It will have been 23 years as chief, and I think 45 years with the department. Mm -hmm. um, and in this day and age, that's quite unusual. I know I'm one so. of the people that voted for him. I was a selectman back then. Were you, yes, yeah, I did vote for, for chief. Him. Yes. I voted Ming, uh, Bob Manian, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and was proud to do so. And, and uh, one of the things that, that the chief really should be cited for, uh, among the many things he did for the town, including upgrading the equipment, but the, he and Chief Meany and the building, permanent building committee really worked to turn out what I think is a pretty spectacular mm -hmm. public safety building. I know it has its critics, but for its size and, uh, but when you see what other towns are getting for the same amount or yep. more, uh, I think it was, uh, a rem turned out remarkably well and it'll serve the town for a long, long time. But the good thing about a small town like this, I, I used to walk my dog at the same time that Bill Kingsbury walked his. Yep. And it was just kind of a nice thing. I don't know in other towns you can find a fire chief walking around town with a dog early in the morning before he goes to work. I thought That's it was right. great. Yes. Yep. You could always chat and see what was going yeah. on. And Although I remember when the selectmen that hired me, uh, one of them was Joe Marchinette, and he used to get up at the, uh, some god-awful time in the morning going to Boston and buy bread at... <laughs> 
at the bakeries in the North End and flowers at the flower market. He brought me in. He brought day. me in one year. Did yep, he? One, yep, yes. he did. So it's, uh, it is an interesting town, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the fascinations about it. When We've had some characters. Here, they, yes. Um, but um, so, so what else happened at the town meeting this year? A lot of zoning changes. Uh, several of them, I think, were brought about as a result of the uh, scare that people had with regard to uh, uh, the development craze kicking in high gear again, not yeah. just the 40B, but other projects coming along that, where they would tear a house down and put up two or three in its place. That's, um, so uh, there were articles changing the definition of a single family home instead of always having to be one unit stacked on top of the other. It could be two units laid out end to end or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, more the way people live today. Yep. Um, lots of uh, articles affecting lot coverage for single family and multifamily developments. Uh, one of the most interesting, I think, is there was a inclusionary zoning bylaw adopted that for any multifamily developments over a certain number of units, uh, and there's different thresholds for the number of units, they will have to provide a level of, of affordable housing so mm -hmm. that the town won't fall further back on its right. 40B inventory. So that should help with the 40B uh, maintaining our 10% if, so. if, if now we just have to get to it. And with the two projects that are, one has been approved, the other is in the hearing stage right now, scheduled for hearing. And where's that one? That's the one at 57 North Street. Oh, okay. Uh, the old uh, bicycle shop or mm -hmm. Victoria Manor. Or it used to be your own store. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, the most. yes. So uh, yeah. that is scheduled for hearing, I believe, next week. I That's think, a yeah, beautiful building. Week. It was a doctor's office, too. Yes. And I first oh, moved I here, Dr. Know, Sachs Doc was Sullivan, in there. Yes. And Dr. Sachs was here. Oh, was he there? Yeah, he's, not, he's the obstetrician that, yeah. that delivered my tra first Medfield boy. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. He was always down on South Street mm -hmm. the years I was here, so. A lot, of, a lot of stories in that building, so I'm glad to see somebody yes. doing something with it. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be nice. Uh, and it's a good location uh, right in the center of town, so. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but that, the whole issue of, of housing, uh, the, uh, Issue of marijuana, medical, uh, <laughs> recreational marijuana, of course, uh, that appeared to be settled by the ballot question that was on the, at the town election that passed by 82%. But the sponsors of that article also got the selectmen to put two articles on one, a general bylaw prohibiting uh, recreational marijuana facilities in, in the town and also a zoning bylaw change prohibiting in all zoning districts in the town. You mean and the sale of it? The what? Prohibiting the sale of it in all zoning prohibiting districts. Prohibiting the sale of it or facilities to uh, uh, grow it other than in your own personal mm -hmm. residence. So, um, And I had a call and an email today advising me that the Attorney General had approved a similar bylaw change in one of the communities north of oh, Boston. Okay. Right? I think it was Wakefield or North Reading, I think it was. So uh, apparently uh, that has met the conditions that the Attorney General felt were necessary to uh, prove it as a bylaw. Uh, there is a special, uh, and I think this is kind of <laughs> ironic. Okay. <laughs> it's a joint committee on uh, recreational marijuana. I said, couldn't they think of a better committee besides the joint <laughs> committee? So, sounds kind of uh, like one of my bad puns. Yes, it does, so, and you have a lot of them. <laughs> yes, um, that's, but the selectman wrote a letter to them uh, urging that they allow towns on a town-by-town -town basis, similar to what, the way it's done with alcohol licenses, to uh, allow or not to allow recreational marijuana facilities. And you know, it's not just um, uh, joints as we were kidding about earlier, uh, just now, but um, as I understand it, the marijuana now comes in a number of forms, uh, including 
dessert, uh, baked goods, uh, candies, beverages. Uh, so it's uh, uh, more, can be packaged in ways that would be very attractive to young kids. And uh, the idea, I think, is, is, is in so far as possible to try to keep it out of the hands of, of youngsters mm -hmm. because it does seem to have a more lasting and negative effect on uh, young people who use it than adults. So, so we'll see what happens, but yeah. that was another issue that was discussed. Um, there was um, street lights, the town opted uh, over my objection to purchase the street lights and maintain them, so now. Uh, you didn't like it, I know. <laughs> no, if we get a light bulb that's out, the town is gonna have to have a separate maintenance contractor to go and change the light mm -hmm. bulbs. And uh, I, you know, I agreed with the concept of switching the lights over to LED. I thought that made sense. Mm -hmm. It does make sense. But I think, uh, in my opinion, it made sense to do that through Evasource mm -hmm. or an electric carrier who has a, uh, the equipment, they have the manpower, the trained with the necessary licenses to deal with high voltage, electricity and whatnot. But, uh, majority rules and, yep. and it passed uh, by a large margin. So we'll uh, uh, be taking over maintenance of street lights. And, uh, we have about 347 lights, by the way, if you ever want a trivia question and somebody asks how many street lights do we have in town. If we regret it, how easy would it be to go back to Eversource? I don't think they'd take you back. Oh, they wouldn't, no. okay. And there is a, there are hearings scheduled this fall. Uh, DEP is gonna set a new utility-owned LED street lighting rate, uh, effective January 1st, 2018. And that's what I was you know, making a pitch. Let's see yeah. what that comes up with. Maybe this, you know, the savings aren't as great as they anticipated. Mm -hmm. Our street lighting budget's only about 42,000. It's not a huge amount mm -hmm. because, as you well know, in 1981, after <laughs> Proposition Two and a Half passed, uh, we took out 25 percent of the street lights. In I was town. on the subcommittee so that drove around saying that I, one, that one. We I took them out. I was to the light, <laughs> the light committee, I believe it was called. So. Oh my God! And nobody the complained. Well, about the taking the out the street lights until the truck showed up at the end of their driveway, <laughs> the end of the street, and started taking the lights down, and then the calls started coming in. The so. weirdest one in my house is we, I voted myself to take the one out right out across the street from my front window. And then we found out, then if we had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, we had to turn on a light in the house because I always <laughs> had the, the street light before. We didn't have to use any of our own electricity. <laughs> they have to get one of those uh, motion, <laughs> <laughs> they probably didn't have motion sensors. But that was so funny then, when yeah. I found out, oh my God, yeah. look what happened. <laughs> But it was my fault. I, I wanted it anyway. Yes. So that was another issue, and, and uh, um, the budgets were actually not up as much as we thought. The health insurance uh, we were able to keep that increase to about a four percent this year, which, given the times, is not bad. Uh, last year went up five and a half percent. The year before that, I believe, it was three percent. So we've been fairly lucky in that regard. Uh, the Insurance Advisory Committee uh, worked, uh, particularly Peter Moran, who is, is the nominal head of that. He's really uh, good. Yes, he's terrific. And he worked to try to uh, come up with a high deductible plan that would be offered as a, as a third plan to active employees. And everything was worked out. We had rates for it. We had the selectman's approval. Um, the Insurance Advising Committee uh, uh, had gone along with it, and then the teachers union decided that uh, they wanted to recommend, that, that to urge their employees not to sign up for it. So there's a meeting the 27th, which I think is tomorrow from the date we're filming here today. And I'm going to be um, ha interviewing uh, the town moderator. Uh, we already talked about it, and I'm going to I have a call into the studio here to see a good time to do it. Yeah. He's free, free to yeah. do it at certain times, and I gave him a variety of dates. Yeah, and, and I think that seems to be the wave of the future. It, it seems to allow for greater individual control of health care costs, mm -hmm. you know, to encourage people to go shopping for things like uh, MRIs and sure. CAT scans and whatnot. 
so they get cheaper prices. Um, but I think it's it's probably going to, it may take a couple of years till the idea sinks in. Yeah. This has become very popular in the private sector and, and a lot of people on town committees are already under high deductible plans. So I think it is, uh, it is coming whether the, they like it or not. <laughs> uh, because the healthcare, otherwise the healthcare costs are just gonna go out of sight. You're getting crazy. Yeah, yeah. So um, it creates a lot of work. Uh, we have to set up the Affordable Housing Trust. Oh, I know one thing people will be glad. Um, w one of the articles authorized the selectmen to lease space on top of the new hospital water That's tower right. for <laughs> cell towers and we've already opened the bids. Uh, the only person that bid on it was Verizon and in terms of cell phone service, they're the most needy. I mean, their service has been terrible in town. Uh, so they will be, uh, town council has been talking with their attorney um, and uh, they should be getting underway soon. They were quite anxious good. to, and it will not only cover a good portion of Medfield, it'll cover a good portion of Dover and Sherbin because of the location, so. I didn't see Mark Fisher in town meeting. Uh, for those at home that don't know Mark, he's the selectman that just retired. He and I was, was wondering, there. He he's going to be interviewed you. by me also here, yeah. tell what it feels like, but I wonder how he felt his first town meeting he sitting seemed, out in the audience. He, he seemed very happy. He came <laughs> up, he came he up told after me he would the be. town meeting <laughs> and he had a big grin on his face mm -hmm. and I said, you, I've never seen you that happy at town meeting when you're worried about speaking on articles or whatnot, but I think he's very relaxed. He did a very good job of selecting him. He did. He was low key. He's yep. very calming influence. And, uh, it's funny how you deal with the different personalities. You know, we have a new selectman that came in to take Mark's place, Gus Murphy, and uh, you were asking about uh, transitioning to a new selectman. And um, it seems like the last several new selectmen to come in have come from the Warrant Committee. Um, and Gus Burby was chairman of the Warren Committee. Uh, Mike, Mark, Mike Marcucci. Mike Marcucci was chairman of the Warren Committee. Mark Fisher Mark was Fisher, on it. You were chairman of the I was chairman of the Warren Committee. Came in. Um, um, and there were uh, probably some others that, if you go back, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, with you, you go back pretty far right there because you were on the selectman yeah, for 30 yeah. years. So. But one um, thing that they told me when I wrote for the newspaper when I was getting started, they said when I went to different meetings, they said, pay attention to the one that talks the least because he probably listens the most. <laughs> and I thought that was a very, very interesting comment. And Mark yes, Fisher was one of the listeners. Yes. He, so yes. when he talked, you knew he'd been listening and he heard what others said. Yes, he was uh, slow to anger, but mm -hmm. when, when he did get angry, he let you know about yep. it. And, uh, but he, he also had a lot of common sense. He did. That, uh, um, he reminded me in some ways of, of Art Farrar and that they <laughs> both had to get up early to go to work in the morning. Oh my God. <laughs> they couldn't wait for the meetings to get over because they, when that alarm clock went off at four or five o'clock in the morning and they had to get up, they were, uh, if, if the meeting went too long, they were not in a, in a they were, since our work were chickens, I'll say that he was in a foul mood when the alarm went off. So well, I had to go home and type because uh, we didn't have the internet then. So somebody That's picked right. my my stuff up at four in the morning. So I'd come yes. home from one of those midnight one a.m. meetings and have to st yeah. start typing. <laughs> oh my yes. God, Almighty! It was crazy. And 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 for those of you who may be too young to ever know this, a typewriter is a <laughs> sort of a medieval medieval <laughs> instrument that used to be prevalent when. When Ann and I uh, first started in town government, yep. that uh, preceded the computer, the PC, and the, All the cell stuff. phone, and the tablet, and whatnot. So, well, I understand there there are still some people, with some authors, who will only use typewriters and really? type in their manuscripts. Yeah. I oh my God. Read an article about that. They they like that clacking of the of the keys. I think it's uh, wow. the rhythm of it. I so. don't even have one anymore. Um, I I think I have someone somewhere, an old Smith Corona, so. Um, but, um, so it's it's gonna be a busy year ahead. The hospital committee, that's the other big thing. Um, the Steve Nolan got up and gave a talk uh, about the successful session they had down at the high school uh, this winter, I guess it was, uh, where they had, uh, oh, I think it was almost 500 people responded to the 
questionnaire the committee put out, and they had four alternate scenarios. They've now knocked it down to um, two uh, based on the uh, feedback they got from residents at that session down at the high school. And I believe it's May 24th. I have it on my calendar. They're going to have a another similar session <coughs> with the two remaining scenarios to try to winnow that down. I knock it down to, to one. A, uh, knock it down to one, and then they are hoping to have a town meeting in the fall to come back with their recommendations yeah. um, on how to reuse the property. And uh, I assume if any zoning changes are required to implement that, mm -hmm. uh, to do so. And, and that's going to be difficult because, as uh, Mr. Harney pointed out at town meeting, it requires a two-thirds vote to resell the property. Yeah. And uh, it makes it uh, somewhat easier for uh, people who are opposed to doing anything up there to uh, uh, convince the town to uh, that change is bad. Yeah. So we'll see. But I, I think the uh, hospital committee is really cranking it up now. They've been meeting every couple of weeks. Uh, they have some good consultants on board. And um, in the meantime, we're going to have a movie filmed up there, so yep. uh, so that will keep the place busy and generate a little income to help pay the bills. And you have a new selectman to deal with it, but at least he was on the Warren Committee before and, and involved in the hospital. So yes. he won't be coming in cold, which is a big advantage. Exactly, yes, yeah. And uh, I must say the Warrant Committee really, given the size of the Warrant, did a remarkable job this mm -hmm. year on getting everything done and, mm -hmm. um, and I must give credit to Evelyn and Chris, Evelyn Clark and Chris uh, Trewala for all the work they did in putting together the Warrant Report and the, and the Town Report. The Town Report didn't go to the printer till the Tuesday before town meeting, so <laughs> the printer <laughs> had to turn around six days. Oh my God. And it came out very well, I thought, and the warrant report, I think, came out very and well. And how many so copies did they make? Uh, we do about 500 of each, I, I believe it is. Wow. And uh, uh, we used to do, well, no, excuse me, the warrant report, we have to one for each household, so that's 5,000, so I think we do for that. And the total cost was and, what? Um, Oh, this cost quite a bit of money, you know, it was, uh, so it was $11,000, so that was probably about close to 60 cents per copy. So, uh, part of it was because it was so late with all mm -hmm. the articles yeah. trying to be reworked at last minute. And uh, part of it was because it was, there were so many pages to it. So, sure. um, so um, it's, um, uh, I said it's over for another year, the town meeting, <laughs> but it never ends. I was kidding uh, the, some of the people that work downstairs in town hall, and I said, you know, the, you're still working on uh, last year's actuarial study report for fiscal 16. We just, not too long ago, got the audit report for fiscal 16 and the workers' comp audit in fiscal 16. We'll be closing the books on fiscal 17. <laughs> we just voted the books on, uh, the, uh, the town meeting voted the appropriations for, for fiscal 18. 18. So you're never really done. It's just yeah. a, con a continuous vicious cycle. It ain't over so, till it's over, huh? No, and it ain't ever over. So, <laughs> um, Who knows, maybe someday I noticed that uh, a few weeks ago, Framingham voted to become a city. I heard that, I was amazed. Uh, and. Uh, I, I guess it uh, was a close vote. I think it passed by something like 112 yeah, votes. Yeah, a little over 100, yeah. Yes, and it was uh, very different. Most towns like Franklin is still uh, has a, has a uh, town council, uh, but they still have a uh, town administrator um, where um, F Framingham is going to a mayor forum and a very strong mayor form. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see how that works out. I, you know, s at close to 70,000 people, they need to do something. I'm not sure if they need to put all the power in the hands of one person. Will they still they have a town meeting? Go. No, 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 no,
Very different. Yeah, yeah. And as I understand it, the uh, city council will have limited powers. The mayor will um, appoint the school committee and serve on the wow. school committee. He will appoint the planning board, the zoning board. <laughs> Uh, oh my God! All boards and committees, all department heads. So must be, better be a good person, then. I hope so. Uh, it That's a lot, be, yes. a lot That's of experience, a lot of responsibility. Responsibility, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. Um, in the meantime, um, it's um, uh, the the track has worked. It seems to be working out very well. The new high school track, uh, the public safety building seems to be working out very well. Mm -hmm. um, the, the downtown is really picked up, really looking nice these days, I think. Um, and the uh, stores all seem to be full. And know. the selectmen haven't fired you yet. I wish they would, <laughs> you know. When will they smarten up and get rid of me, so. Maybe they won't, oh, maybe this week, come well, on. When will I smarten up and, and get rid of myself? <laughs> so, or they say the best, the best sign of a good management is when a manager knows when to fire himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think they'll do a good job, and I think Gus Murphy will do a very good job as a newcomer. I do. He's yes. very experienced, so I think he's going to do fine. I think he will. He's he's uh, uh, loves his charts. He was famous on the Warren Committee for his charts that were spread <laughs> out all over the the uh, whiteboard down in the Warren Committee room, and um, so I'm sure he'll be. Uh, uh, looking for, he, he seems to like to focus long term. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, he's, he's also uh, uh, head of the trustees of the OPEP, the other post employment benefits trust that we've been putting money aside to fund yeah. retiree health insurance. And that's done quite well. We've invested all in the state PRIT, what's called PRIT retirement system, and seems to be doing very well financially. Uh, and with this latest town meeting appropriation that uh, was just voted this week for another 400,000, we'll have, uh, I think, about $2.6 million in it. Now, our liability the last time was 40, unfunded liability was something like 47 million, but I think now that we have a trust, it's earning in income, that should lower that mm -hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. So. Uh, and a lot of towns are not prepared for that. They're not doing anything to fund their either unfunded pension liabilities or their oh. unfunded uh, uh, health insurance liabilities, and it's gonna catch up with them. Um, well, that's another interesting thing, too. I don't know if people are aware, but uh, Senator Timothy, who's been our senator for, I think, about eight years now. A long time, yeah. Yes, he's uh, announced he's, his intention to uh, resigned from the Senate. I was, I was and, so surprised. Yes. Well, I am and I'm not, you know. Uh, it's tough when you got 40 towns and you've got a family and you got to be out every night of the week going to But he seemed to enjoy it. He came to so many events here on Medfield. He seemed to enjoy being part of the political network. I think he did, but I'm sure it takes a toll on your family life. Oh, so. I'm sure it does. So, But uh, he's uh, stepping down to become Norfolk County Treasurer. Yeah. And uh, that will necessitate a new election to replace him. Uh, town clerk has, has been uh, trying to contemplate what was done. We did add to the budget at town meeting and knowing that we would have to have the state election, unlike the town election, yeah, where right. is, is you have to have a primary and a final election because it's partisan. You Not have a Democratic either. primary and a no, I, I think we added about eleven thousand dollars to do that. Uh, those two elections, and they, they probably won't be until the fall, because there's a. I'm not sure if he's actually submitted his resignation. He announced mm, okay. his intention to submit it, but then you have to have uh, time to uh, uh, for people to file papers sure. and collect signatures that, uh, that intend to run. Um, and you have to allow time for voter, special voter registration periods for absentee yeah. ballot mail and whatnot. So it, it's, uh, and, and they need time to campaign, yeah. especially where you're talking about a senatorial district, which I think covers somewhere around 40 towns. Sure. So, 
So it will be interesting times. There was some suggestion that uh, there was a Mr. Shortsleeve that lived in town. There's mm -hmm. some suggestion he was contemplating the oh. possibility of running. Um, there were people from, uh, I think, Walpole and Stoughton that were also looking at running. So it will uh, probably be a wide open race. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, and I think it's important that people of Medfield get out and make their thoughts known because uh, the Senate the, in the House these days seem to be controlled by what I call the Boston crowd. Um, I have other names for them, but we won't use those <laughs> on television. So. And they, uh, they tend to uh, be very uh, interested in what goes on in Boston. And big city, absolutely. And not really what happens in the rest of the state. And there are other issues at work too. You know, we talk about 40B, but there's a legislation that's been filed in both the House and the Senate that essentially would strip zoning away. It seems to me it's based on something that's taking place in California where developers now are suing cities and towns, saying that the cities and towns are discriminating against people by not providing housing for them. Okay. So, I mean, and the categories that you can't discriminate against have expanded so greatly that essentially everybody's in a special category. Uh, yeah. So uh, if anyone uh, challenges the zoning uh, based on the federal fair housing standards, uh, there's a possibility it would be thrown out, especially if this legislation passes. Mm -hmm. So um, it's uh, perilous times, and I think people need to pay attention and and find out who they're voting for and what their positions are yeah. on these matters because it does matter. And you know, it doesn't do you any good to come in after the fact and say, but we don't want that. I know. You have to be up front and be out there and before it happens, finding out who's in charge, what their decisions are, what the basis for it is, and how the towns and the individuals can have some say in what's being done. Yeah. In my 30 years as a selectman, I always called Carol Mayer. If somebody called with a complaint about some vote that had happened at town meeting that going to jeopardize, they thought, their pro own property, I would call Carol and say, did Mr. Jones from 200 Main Street or whatever, did yes. he go to town meeting? And she'd say no. <laughs> so I would call Mr. Jones back and say, you are part of the problem, if and it's I, true. And if I'm you sure don't Mr. come and speak. Yes, yes. And I'm sure Mr. Jones frequently was very indignant. He wasn't too happy when I called that. back. Yes. He said, what did yeah. it matter that I wasn't there? And I said, you could yes. have spoken your case and maybe you would have won it. Especially in a town with an open town meeting. Absolutely. Because you are represent if you're a registered voter, you're a, a, a member of the, t of the mm -hmm. town body politic. Yeah. And if you choose not to exercise it, then you do so at your own peril. But I thought it was important to call, call them back and tell them. This is what happened, and this is part of the re you're part of the reason why. Yes, yeah. I think what happened in, on different issues in town over the last year was a wake-up call to a lot of people. That I they think it has be been involved. too. So, and sometimes that's a good thing, you know, that, that people uh, take things for granted. Uh, that you know the town sees through running okay. I don't need to get involved mm -hmm. until something happens and it shakes them out of their. Uh, uh, their state of well-being and makes them realize that they too have got to do their part. Yeah. So I get off the soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> they so have a tendency to get on that. So all in all, you think the new selectman is blending in well? Yes, I think he is. He's got a nice way about him, and he's a West Point man, so I'm sure he'll bring order <laughs> to, out of chaos and. Uh, I know he is. I think I think Mark Mancucci blended him well. Um, I, I think, think oh, I Mark think Fisher, of course, yes. grew up here, yes. so he had yes. the easy transition. He's, uh, he's, I tell him he's the only original town he left. Right. So. And Pete Peterson was a fairly new resident when he became a selectman, but yes. he's blended in well. And he served on the Board of Appeals before that, so right. he had experience. And, too, and yeah. uh, Bob Locker, of course, grew up most of the yes. time here. Ken yep. Childs didn't grow up here, but he spent a lot of time here and he worked here. His, his yes. office was here in Medfield. Yeah. So we've had a lot of different ones over the years. Yes, we certainly have. They have it's done a lot. A lot of people have put a lot of time mm -hmm. in on the town. Uh, they really have. Uh, and, and I think the results show. I think that, you know, you, 
uh, when people come to Medfield, they're very impressed with the attractiveness of the downtown, the open space, the old houses have been restored. The yep. public architecture is pretty, pretty good. Um, and we have a lot of recreational amenities, you know, between the river and the, and the open fields and um, basketball courts yep. and whatnot. Not enough, you never have enough. But I have a canoe in my garage anytime you want to borrow it. There we go, okay. <laughs> um, I'll uh, have to wait till the Celtic season is over though. <laughs> it seems like these sports seasons go on forever. They never end. No. Um, but it's, um, uh, I, I think it's getting more critical that people need to get involved. And uh, you know, it's this national election showed that um, there's huge dissatisfaction uh, among the voters with both political parties. It's not just Trump that people are upset with, they're upset with the Democratic Party, they're upset with the Republican Party, and with good reason. You know, it seems like uh, they're being ignored for the most part. And, uh, you know, uh, the special interests that toss the money around or, or the people with the wacky ideas get paid. Uh, uh, a lot of given a lot of credence, and the average person that puts the bills, um, or whose kids and grandchildren will have yeah. to put the bills for this, is, is getting the short end of the stick. I've got grandchildren here in town, and it's really going to be care. you know it's going to be all over. It doesn't matter what they, what they say; you can run, but you can't hide. Uh, the bills the federal government is running up, the tab they're running up is is going to hit you no matter where you live because it's a national debt. So. I'm lucky that three of my six kids live here and they've all been involved in different things. At Girl Scouts, uh, my daughter's on the Warren Committee, my daughter-in-law yeah. was on the Building Committee when they yeah. built the Senior Center, uh, my son's coach, different sports. Um, they've really gotten involved and I think it's great and I wish every family could yeah. say that. You've done something good there, Thompson. Something, so. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it was my husband did something good, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm glad they did and they love the town too. Yes, and I think you both set good examples uh, for them. But it's and, important to be yeah. part of your town, not just to, to sit around and do nothing, but to be part. What's that old line? If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I call the people that go to, don't go to town meeting and then complain. Yes. Well, it was, you know, it was good this year to see that, that several of the, the uh, seats were contested. Um, library trustees, school committees, selectmen, um, that the people were actually taking out papers mm -hmm. and running for the last few years before that, uh, we Pretty had dull. trouble getting people to yeah. run. So that's good to see that uh, there's a renewed spark of interest. And I don't know whether it was a presidential election, where it was the Dale Street housing proposal, whether it was, you know, the politics in general, Combination, the state level, know. a little bit of everything, I guess, has got people um, realizing that they better get involved before it's too late. But at this point, at the end of April of this year, you think things are going pretty well? We got through with an, without another operating override. <laughs> that says one thing. It's been, I think, this will be the sixth year without an operating override. No. Okay, let's see what you say in a month when we come back, see if you'll be as happy. Yes. We'll yeah. find out. Well, I've learned over the years that uh, nobody's happy all of the time. It's <laughs> with that line, you can please some of the people some of the time. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and that includes myself, <laughs> I, I, as you well know from my soapbox speeches. I'm frequently one of the complainers. So. Yep. So. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you went to the Wharton School with Donald Trump, so I <laughs> can excuse that. <laughs> That's right. My reunion's coming up next, next month. Not, not with uh, the class I was in with him. That'll be next year. But You're a year ahead of him? I got my undergraduate. The, in 67, and I got my master's from Wharton in 68. He, he graduated from undergrad from Wharton in 68. Okay. So, so he was a lowly undergrad when I was at grad school. And I graduated so, from there in 55. Yes, <laughs> a little that's bit right. Yes. A little bit before. Yes, yeah. <laughs> a little bit before. It's, uh, uh, it's turned out to be quite a place. They have not just Donald Trump. Uh, Elizabeth Warren taught there for a long time. <laughs> Joe Biden is now teaching there. I heard that. So I bet he'd be a great uh, teacher. 
I, he certainly has the uh, background and the mm -hmm. experience. So, um, although I, I found it when I was at, at in college, it was the grad students that were the best teachers. The uh, I, I noticed el that too. Elite, the elite professors seemed to uh, look down on teaching. They were more interested in doing research and writing mm -hmm. uh, than they were in teaching. I, I agree so, with you. So, uh, you never know. You don't know. Uh, and speaking of uh, time, uh, it looks we're probably out of time by now, haven't we? Pretty much what? Um, what time is it? I think we've probably run beyond a Why, half what did an you hour. want to add? Um, I'd just like to, s to uh, wish Aditi the best yeah. in um, moving on. And she's done, uh, accomplished quite a bit just uh, in terms of programming for somebody that came in not knowing a lot about cable. Uh, she's done a wonderful job, and I wish her the best. And um, I hope she likes the heat. In, the heat in the so desert. It's not the heat in the kitchen out there. It's the heat in the desert. But. She called me this morning to say another goodbye, and then she said, "Well, make sure you have my cell phone number, so if you ever go back down, in, you know, go back down south to give her a call." So yes, I would. Yeah, yeah. But I've only been down in that area t of, the, of the country once, and it was it was hot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What do they call it? Egg frying country. <laughs> yeah, but I wish so. I wish her the very best. I think you do too. Yes. Yeah. And I hope yeah. everybody at home does because we owe, owe Aditi a lot. Yes. And uh, the other thing too is Richard Desorga leaving town. Yep. Boy, that talk about uh, the uh, shot heard around the town. And you Harry Petoni left town. Harry Petoni left town. That surprised yes, me even yes. more. Yes. It really surprised yes. me when Harry left. Um, but you know, I wish them well. I know. Uh, uh, Richard and Julia are, are moving to the Cape, yeah. I understand. So that's Julie's a, a sweetheart. She's a very nice lady. Yes, she really is, yes. She'd have to be to put up with Richard. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say that when you ever get married. We'll say that about your wife, too. <laughs> yes. That's right. I have, well, I tell my, my nieces, uh, most of them, they live down south or up in New York, and they refuse to say the word aunt. <laughs> so I used to tell them all the time when they were young that they were the reason I had to stay single. And they'd say, why? I'd say, I wasn't going to marry an aunt. So. <laughs> in Philadelphia, we called them aunts. Yes, Except uh, I had yes. an Aunt Helen and an Aunt Helen, an Aunt Mary and an Aunt Mary. Aunt Mary. So we knew which one we were talking about. Isn't that weird? <laughs> and, and you aren't sure which is which? <laughs> 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 On that, we better end. <laughs> oh, that's a perfect way to end my <laughs> And I'll follow it and solve it. <laughs> All right, everybody at home, thank you so much for watching Medfield TV. <laughs> you can put up with this man. We'll do it again. I uh, very much appreciate you watching Medfield TV. We certainly wish Aditi the best of luck and I wish Brett the best of luck as he continues her job. I think he'll do as good a job as she did. I hope so. So again, thanks for watching Medfield TV. Medfield TV, community show.